all right guys so welcome back um today we're going to be looking at uh, how to play the false nine false nine is a system which was popularized around 2008 uh, when pep guardiola first used it in an el clasico which we'll come to i'll talk to you about the real life uh, implementation of it and how you can use it in the game the players to use and so yeah let's get into it so as i said it was first uh, probably implemented by Guardiola in the El Clasico in 2008. Um, it was a big game. This was the starting lineup that Barcelona rolled out. That's how they started the game. It looked pretty normal. But there, around 10 minutes there was a big change that uh, defines uh, that game. So it was an important match. I think whoever won that match would have probably won La Liga that year. It was close to the end of the season. So the match kicked off. And for the first 10 minutes, it was just regular. The teams were playing normal. But then around 10 minutes, Pep Guardiola gave the signal to Messi and Eto to swap positions. So Messi moved centrally and Eto, who was traditionally a striker or a number 9, moved out to the wing. Now why is that? Because Messi, playing as a false 9, dropped deep. A number 9 usually runs into the box, but Messi drops deep. And that created space for wingers like Henri and Eto to run into and score. Because that's the entire essence of a false nine. Uh, the whole job of a false nine is instead of getting into the box like a usual number nine, he'll drop off and create a lot of space for wingers to attack into. And that space can even be exploited by attacking midfielders. Basically, he's drawing the center backs. The center backs don't know whether to mark him or to leave him. If they mark him, it leaves a lot of space like this. If they come towards him, it leaves space for the attacking midfielders like Iniesta to get involved. So that's just a little bit about how it was first uh, popularized and how it first came to prominence. How do we use it in game? So this is the squad I tried using. Goalkeeper and centre backs, not much to say, uh, not really uh, important. Go with your preference. Wing backs. Now I prefer to use uh, very attacking wing backs in this area because, as I said. The false nine drops deep. The wingers come inside, which creates a lot of space on the flanks for your fullbacks to attack. And so I prefer to use skillful fullbacks um, who are great at crossing, who will get up the pitch. So Robertson and Cancelo work really well. Both are very attacking. They, as you can see, the wingers come inside, so it creates space on the flank for your fullback to get into a crossing position and deliver a beautiful cross like that. Um, I love Cancelo, man. Uh, he's so skillful. He has a double touch. I mean, it's something else when your fullback is dribbling past your opponent. Like, look at that. It's just it's so much fun to use Cancelo. And he has the fullback finisher card, so he keeps getting involved in attacks. You see, he doesn't want to go back. He wants to get in, be that extra man in attack. So it's very fun to use him. I love using Cancelo. And Robertson is the same on the other flank. Not as skillful, not as attacking as... Uh, Cancelo, but a good mixture. So then we come to midfield. Uh, in anchoring midfield, I mean, you know me, as manual switch, I always use an anchor man. Barry is great. I'm just using Barry because I got tired of using Gilberto Silva. I mean, he is too good. So I've been using Barry and Barry's actually impressed me, man. He's been really good for me. Definitely try him out. The center mids, as I said, they also have a lot of space to attack. So make sure you are using center mids that will look to exploit space. Now again, I've said this before, Beckham at CMF acts like a whole player at times. And Mateus is a box-to-box, -box. he gives good balance, but sometimes I use Frank Lampard there. But in this system, the way you play, your midfielders will also get involved a lot. And your false nine dropping back means there's a lot of space for them to attack into. The defenders get drawn out, there's so much space for them to run into. So make sure you're using center mids that will be comfortable in the opposition's box. And of course, uh, the probably the main goal scorers in this uh, system, your wingers. Again, you got to look for prolific wingers. You you can play prolific wingers, roaming flanks, even goal poachers as SS on the wing will do great because basically you're looking for players with high offensive awareness, good speed to exploit those spaces created by the false sign dropping back. So the players I like to use, I start with Ronaldo on the wing and I bring on Mane. Uh, as a substitute after half time quick good at shooting they have to be good at shooting because they're going to score a lot of the goals 
On the right, I use Salah. Great for curls, and I bring on Sane as a super sub. Uh, he doesn't. I don't have the player of the week card, but even the base card is just as good. So finally, coming to the center forward, the false nine, the heart of the system. You can see in this system, I'm using Messi. The videos around him because he just has everything you need. He's. Uh, I mean, he was the one that first played it. He's got the stats to back it up, but in case you don't have iconic moment Lionel Messi as a tribute, you can always use Diego Maradona at center forward. You know, uh, it's very sad what happened to him and they sold us in peace. So you can definitely use Maradona position, train him to center forward. And he will perform, I think, very similar to the way Messi performed. Because what are you looking for? You want high offensive awareness so that after they have created space, in case you need them arriving late in the box, they will be there. Good dribbling, of course. Good passing, very important. You can even use players like Totti. You can use. Uh, I even use Josip Ilicic at centre forward. Basically, I prefer no play style because their movement is better. They drop off and create that space. So essentially, they are going to be the hub of all your attacks, right? You're going to be playing the ball into them, wall passing off them. Uh, you know, one winger to him, turn and switch it to the other winger. So that's how majority of your attacks are going to be constructed. Uh, it's quite fun to use in game, and it's quite effective as well because you know, it's uh, if you're using prolific wingers like Ronaldo and Mane, Salah, who are going to get into those scoring positions and make the difference for you, it's very very effective. So that was just about the squad build. So let's get into a little bit of gameplay. So the essence of all your gameplay is going to be getting the ball with Messi, drawing in defenders and then spreading it to the wide men. Like this. Now, if I, this is another reason why I use Ronaldo because look at that. Who's going to out jump him? Absolutely massive. But you can see the reason this system works is because again, Messi is so deep. There's just a huge gap left. That's just that clear avenue for Ronaldo to run into. Such an open... You know, pass such a direct pass is opened up, and that's what causes all the problems. I mean, this guy goes to ground, so he concedes a penalty, and you know, it's all created from that space left by Messi falling back. And that's what most of your play is going to center around. Like, you get the ball, play it to Messi, draw in the center back. Look, Campbell comes rushing out. Look at the space he leaves in behind for Ronaldo. I mean, Ronaldo's just going to eat that up for breakfast. So that's just the beauty of how this works. You get the ball, find your striker again. Look, he's drawn in the defenders, and this is one good thing about Messi having high offensive awareness. If there's space, you can just play it back to him. There's no other options, and because this Messi card has lovely speed and balance, he will go all the way and finish it himself. Doesn't always need to be the uh, provider. He can score as well. Again. Messi's drop, look at how Varane's charged out and that creates just this entire space for Sane to just run into. He's so quick Sane, especially as a super sub, no one's going to catch him. He slots it in. In this situation, again, play the ball to Messi, give and go. That didn't work, so we get it up with Cancelo again. Another reason why I love using Cancelo. Look, we draw in the defender, play him in again and again. Ronaldo is lethal in the air. We got unlucky. He was offside. But now here again. Messi gets the ball. The centre-backs come charging out. Space is created. It's, I, I seem like I'm saying the same thing over and over again. But it's just beautiful how it works. That Messi dropping deep creates all these spaces. Like look at this again. You play the ball to him. You don't always have to turn. Sometimes you play the ball to Messi and you play the direct return pass because there was so much space in this situation. Other times you'll play the ball to Messi and the return pass will be blocked. So you'll turn around. Like look at this in this situation. This is a brilliant counter. We play. I know he's not going to get the return pass. Now again, we draw the pressure with Messi and release Sane on the other side. And what a counter. Three pass counter. Look at the space Sane has to run into. Just miles and miles. And with his space, he's going to absolutely eat that up. No one's ever catching him. It's It was a goal as soon as Messi made that pass. So, that's that's why I love using this system. Again, high offensive awareness. There's a lot of space. He just 
gets in there and finishes it. So he doesn't always have to drop. That high offense awareness definitely does help. Look, this is, I think I was using Inzaghi on the wing. Again, a good reason why you can use goal coaches. Look, how, because how deep Messi drops, if you're playing against opponents that spam the pressure button, especially double press, you will completely expose them because Messi is going to keep dropping and dropping. They're going to keep pressing him. They're going to get drawn way out of position. Again, this was a lovely goal. Involvement with the fullbacks. One touch pass. Again, Messi gets the ball. This guy was spamming the pressure. Turns. Inzaghi is in absolute acres. That's why you need a good passer as well. Some of these passes that Messi was finding are absolutely exquisite. And Messi is a really good passer. And again, easy goal. So, that's just how the false nine works. I've been using it. I've been enjoying it a lot. It's very fun to use. It's very dynamic on the break. Like, look at this. So much space in Zagi. He should have done better, but, you know, not a problem. So, yeah, that was just my guide on how to use the false nine. Of course, uh, you could use the false nine manager himself, El Scaloni, I think his name is, who has that uh, SS, central SS, little deeper. But I just prefer this. I mean, I don't know. I don't see the reason why. I mean, you can see he acts like that SS in game itself. You don't even need to convert him to an SS, even though he is playing as a center forward. So, yeah, uh, that was the review for today. Um, let me know what you guys would like to see next. I'm not sure when I'll be able to upload next because uh, colleges are starting again and exams are starting again. So I may or may not have time to upload that often, but still, you guys have been very uh, supportive on Reddit. Um, make sure you guys join the Pez Mobile subreddit, even on Discord. I know a lot of people that uh, do like my videos. Make sure to head on over there. All the links are in the description. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And yeah. Take care.